Today's video is going to be all about deep conditioning low porosity hair, as I'm almost 100% sure you already know because you clicked on this video. We're talking tips, ingredients, and product recommendations. I'm also going to be sharing with you guys the exact names of proteins that are most likely to be low porosity friendly, so make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video so that you don't miss out on that. Right, we've got lots of information, not very much time, so how about we get into this video? I'm gonna start this video the exact same way I started the twin video for high porosity hair and say that it's always a good place to start by identifying hair needs first and then looking for what's going to meet those needs. Like high porosity hair and all other hair types, low porosity hair also needs sources of moisture, of conditioning, and yes, of protein. Drag me. I didn't stutter and I shall not be moved, okay? That being said, I'm gonna split this video into two parts protein-free deep conditioning and protein-containing deep conditioning. Let's start with protein-free deep conditioning. Unlike high porosity hair that needs help getting and keeping moisture in the hair to stop it from getting dry and brittle so quickly, low porosity hair on the other hand needs deep moisture and conditioning in order to improve its softness and flexibility, and not so much to prevent it from getting dry. Let's be real, this is low porosity hair we're talking about. Moisture retention is not really our concern. This need to improve softness and flexibility is especially true the wider or coarser your low porosity hair is. And this is also why medium to coarse low porosity hair can often come across as dry to the untrained eye, whereas in actual fact, it's just naturally wiry. So let's just get this out of the way. Water's gotta be ingredient number one. Water is nature's only inherent moisturizer, not oil, not butters, not conditioners, water. Okay, I'm glad we're all in agreement. However, in addition to water being the first ingredient, people with low porosity hair want to focus on deep conditioners that can infuse the hair with moisture as well as improve the feel of the hair without the use of moisture preserving aids like heavy butters or silicones, which will undoubtedly just create thick barriers and films on top of the hair that quite frankly is unnecessary for low porosity hair that can already hold its own when it comes to moisture. So you wanna go for deep conditioners with oils instead of heavy butters or deep conditioners that have a lower butter content, i.e. the butters are listed a little bit further down the ingredients list as opposed to within the first three to four ingredients. Good examples of lightweight oils for low porosity hair include sweet almond oil, jojoba oil, rosehip oil, argan oil, as well as grapeseed oil. These oils will moisturize and condition low porosity hair without causing superficial buildup on the hair. Now, if you're somebody that has fine low porosity hair, these oils are also really good options for you because they will be able to moisturize and condition your hair without weighing it down so that you can maintain body in your hair and not have your hair be limp because of all the weight. Now, when it comes to film forming humectants and plant gels, we already know that what makes them such good moisturizers is their film forming nature. But this does not mean that they cannot still be a benefit to low porosity hair types that are typically averse to heavy films. Now this is because the film from these special types of humectants are both light and flexible. I would liken the film that you get from plant gels and film forming humectants to a hydrating wall of water as opposed to a hard, dry, impenetrable wall as is a more accurate representation of what you'd be getting from things like silicones and beeswax. And when it comes to deep conditioners for low porosity hair, the role of these humectants also goes beyond providing moisture, as they are very useful in adding lubrication, otherwise known as slip, as well as curl or coil defining properties to a deep conditioner. Two things that regardless of your hair's porosity, I think we can all agree that we appreciate. So good examples of your film forming humectants, you've got your aloe vera, juice and gel, you've got marshmallow root, slippery elm, panthenol, and the likes. If you haven't seen my video on film forming humectants yet, then you wanna go ahead and watch that video because I've got an extensive list of different film forming humectants that you can find. Now when it comes to conditioning ingredients, as far as I know, most of these will work the same on low porosity hair as they do on high porosity hair. So I'm gonna use the same list here as I did in the video for high porosity hair. So ingredients you wanna look out for are your fatty alcohols, esters, your sterols, glycols, triglycerides, polycortaniums, centrimonium methosulfate, and of course, the OG behentrimonium methosulfate. So here are a few good examples of protein-free deep conditioners that fit this spec. The first one is the Jane Carter Revive and Repair Hair Mask. So looking at the ingredients here, we've got water as the first ingredient, coconut oil, cetyl alcohol, we've got behentrimonium methosulfate, behentrimonium chloride, cetyl esters, shea butter ethyl esters, we've got passion flower oil, phospholipids, soybean oil, glycolipids, soybean sterols, panthenol, set with 20, sterile alcohol, phenoxyethanol, 
fragrance, the sodium EDTA, and citric acid. So we can see that this conditioner has a good balance of some oils, some moisturizers, as well as some conditioning ingredients. This next one is the Mish Beauty Indulge Deep Conditioner. Now, you guys have your girl Ashley P to thank for this one. Shout out to you, Ashley P. You put the P in MVP, girl. So the ingredients in this deep conditioner are distilled water, aloe vera juice, behentrimonia methosulfate, cetyl alcohol, babasu oil, olive oil, castor oil, shea olein, propanidiol, glycerin, honey, fragrance phenoxyethanol, caprylol sorbic acid, guar gum, hydroxyethyl cellulose, and slippery elm extract. Listen, looking through this ingredient list, I didn't even have low porosity hair, but guess what? I'm trying it. Why? Because I can. <laughs> Who gonna check me, boo? My third and final recommendation in this category is the Sultanicals Chebe Ginger Super Deep Conditioner. Really, would it be Sultanicals if you didn't bite your tongue in the process of trying to pronounce one of their names? Sultanicals, I love you guys, but why does every product name have to be a tongue twister? So the ingredients in this are distilled water, behentrimonium methosulfate, cetyl alcohol, olive oil, babasu oil, stereomidopropyl dimethylamine, chebe powder, ginger powder, fenugreek powder, amla powder, stinging nettle, burdock root, Jamaican black castor oil, ginseng root extract, provitamin B5, which is another name for panthenol, sodium lactate, guar gum, onion juice, gluconodal telactone, sodium benzoate, fragrance, peppermint, and rosemary essential oils. Okay, no prosty gang. I already put a list of all the products that I talk about in this video in the description box below, but I'm also gonna need some help from you guys. I'm going to need you guys to fill the comments with the deep conditioners that you swear by for your low prosty hair. One, you will undoubtedly have tried a lot more low prosty friendly deep conditioners than I have, so popping it in the comments will likely help other low prosty curlies in the fam. And two, let's see if we can find a correlation between the ingredients of your favorite deep conditioners and some of the tips that I've mentioned in this video. Finally, before we move into the protein containing deep conditioners, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos like this every week and whilst you're at it go ahead and hit that like button for me too okay let's talk about protein So if you've watched any of my other videos on protein use, you'll probably remember me saying that people who have low porosity hair or protein sensitive hair types should start with protein free staples in their regimen whilst you're still getting to know your hair and then introduce proteins little by little. And ideally through a deep conditioner, only. When you do introduce this one deep conditioner that contains protein, let it contain one protein, maximum two proteins. I say this because it makes it so much easier for you to be able to track how much protein is going into your hair, and this will also help you to isolate specific proteins so that you can know exactly which ones your hair likes and doesn't like. To break it down even further, when you're getting started, ideally you want to look out for deep conditioners that contain lower weight proteins and then work your way upwards. So in an ideal situation, you'd be looking to start out with some amino acids and then move up to peptides and then move up to hydrolyzed proteins. Amino acids are the smallest kinds of proteins that you will typically be able to find, and like peptides, are not actually really proteins. Simply put, multiple amino acids will make up peptides, and multiple peptides will make up proteins, of which hydrolyzed silk, hydrolyzed oat, and hydrolyzed keratin, or hydrolyzed cashmere, or wool, are of the lowest types of proteins that you could typically find. Lower weight proteins are small enough to go beyond the hair's cuticle to improve the hair's inherent moisture as well as boost the hair's elasticity. But they simply aren't big or heavy enough to create films on the hair, and so you typically don't have to worry with them contributing to build up on low porosity hair. And finally, here are a few good low protein deep conditioners that fit this spec. The first one is the ultimate goat as I am hydration elation. So as you guys can see from the ingredients, you've got a good combination of some oil, some moisturizing ingredients, some conditioning ingredients, and it also contains betaine, which is an amino acid. So this conditioner has the lowest possible protein content that you could possibly find. Another good example is the main choice Ancient Egyptian Anti-Breakage and Repair Antidote Hair Mask. Again, we can see a good combination of some moisturizing ingredients. We've got some film forming humectants in here. We also have a good amount of conditioning ingredients. And then if you look about three or four ingredients from the bottom, we can see silk amino acids. Again, the only protein in this deep conditioner are the silk amino acids. And this final deep conditioner is the TGIN Honey Miracle Hair Mask. Now going through these ingredients, we can see that again, we've got water as the first ingredient. We've got a good amount of normal humectants and film forming humectants in here. We also have some conditioning ingredients in here 
And this conditioner actually has no butters in it whatsoever, just oils, so that's really good as well. The only thing that I will say about this deep conditioner is that, as you can see, it does contain silicones in the last few ingredients. So if you are gonna try this deep conditioner, then that's something to be mindful of and make sure that you do follow with a clarifying shampoo the week after. But other than that, I see no reason why this deep conditioner shouldn't work well for you if you have low porosity hair. Well, that's all from me today, guys. If you have low porosity hair and you're still unsure about protein use, then go ahead and click and watch this playlist on the screen right now, and that should clear things up for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was as useful as the high porosity one for everyone who was asking me to do a low porosity one. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Mwah.